This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Riley Smith. Good day and welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Today is Tuesday, February 20th of 2024. We're so glad you could join us for today's show, especially after that long weekend from President's Day. In today's episode, I have a check of the latest Iowa Ag News headlines, including an update on some data from pork exports and beef exports. And we'll go ahead right now and dive into the closing market report. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. At the end of another trading day in the ag marketplace, we're here with Ross Baldwin of agmarket.net. Uh, first off, Ross, uh, how are the markets trading today after that extended weekend? We had a firmer day of trade across most all of the commodity markets. The grain markets, they, they started the the Monday night trade off on a firmer note with soybeans, they actually gapped higher. We did fill that gap today across the bean market, which in some people's eyes, that, that's a good thing. And the, the reason beans were firmer last night was just, just some weather concerns down in South America. And just there was more chatter over the weekend about <clears throat> that, that crop size getting smaller, coming down to some of those, those private analyst numbers that you, you have seen over the last couple of weeks out of South America, which was supportive for the bean market. And then, you know, a big thing we've been seeing lately, you know, looking around the state for basis prices is a lot of those bids are coming in at the $3 level, especially for corn. Um, you know, something that we haven't seen in a while, but when we're looking at those prices necessarily, they're not necessarily terrible prices, but they're just kind of getting to almost pre-COVID levels there, right? Correct. These are the these are pre-COVID numbers, uh, which, which uh, it, it's uh you get to that below four dollar cash type of price i mean that that is a uh price that probably more normal across the markets but the unfortunate part is is with the inflationary environment that we've been in and and the the high inputs it, it's definitely it's definitely uh some tough prices we're seeing across the corn belt and then we also had a uh... I don't know if I'd call it a little bit of excitement in the uh, ag news, the global ag news today, at least there was a, um, a blockage and a waterway in Argentina. Um, are we anticipating any issues that would have come for that? Because it's, you know, I was talking earlier a little bit, it's not necessarily a Suez Canal situation, but it was a blockage. Correct. As you said, it, it's not a Suez Canal type situation, but it's it's something that it, it gets the market chattering across it when you, when you see low water levels like that, it, it's, makes you wonder i mean can you see that the brazil crops you know w will they get smaller when you see levels like that and, and i i think it, it it was a little of the underlying strength that we saw last night when the bean market opened up and we gapped higher on that opening all right and then looking at the uh, livestock side of things uh, what do we see in those uh, cattle and hog markets today they were firmer as well live cattle the the nearby months they we saw a lot of spreading action going on with, with the the April months as, as traders move some of that length out, and the deferreds were firmer. Feeder cattle they were sharply higher. They were April was a dollar eighty higher. The the back months were two fifty to two sixty higher. And so I, I when you look at the cattle market, the interesting thing is is we've got a cattle on feed report come that's coming out this Friday, and and there's a the excitements around the placements number, the, the on feed guesses is 100.1. The, the guesses on placements is 87.3, which is sharply lower. And the marketing's number is 99.8. So when you talk about cattle, they're, they, in my opinion, that's the most, it, they've got the most bullish set of fundamentals of any of the ag, ag commodities that we watch for the rest of this year and, and potentially even 2025 as the U.S. herd gets smaller. But when, when you look at placements, if they're 87.3, and, and I do want to hit on that number real quick, there's some, I think, some context around that number. But when you see placements that light, there needs to be more premium in the back end. And I think that's 
we, we've seen that over the last year or two across the cattle markets as the traders have put premium in the back end as the numbers they continue to get tighter as, as each month goes by we'll get into tighter numbers and so i think that that's a, a reason that you see the deferred contracts gaining on the nearby which it's a little contrary to what you think about in a bull market because most in bullish markets the the nearbys will lead the way but in, in the cattle market the the bear spreading that we've seen, it, it's not a negative sign in my opinion, because the the more bullishness that's on the back end of this. But the one thing I do want to say about placements is I'm just as bullish as the next person is with the cattle markets. But that placements number that we'll get to see this Friday, it, it's it's bullish. There's no question. You get below 90%. I mean, that's a bullish number. But with the weather that we saw in the month of January, the the blizzards, the cold weather feeder runs they were quite a bit smaller and so that has driven the placements to to be lighter as auctions they they were you know canceled postponed whatever with the colder weather this month for february we have seen these auctions be more aggressive so in the big picture um you could see this next month's cattle on feed placements be a little bit higher but it, it didn't change anything in the cattle market. Really, all, all it has been is shuffling cattle around, in my opinion. All right, Ross, lots of great information today. For those of our listeners who'd like to get in touch and learn more from the folks at agmarket.net, how can they do that? You can reach me at our office here in Anthem. It's 712-373-3276, or you can find any one of us at agmarket.net. Great talking with you as always, Ross, and we look forward to uh, getting more great market analysis from you soon. Thanks for having me, Riley. Uh, that again was Ross Baldwin of agmarket.net. We'll go ahead and take a look at how those numbers close through the market window at iowaagnet.com. March corn up two and a quarter at 418 and three quarters. March soybeans up six and three quarters at 1179 even. March soybean meal up two dollars at 347.60. Soybean oil down 18 cents at 45.41. Chicago wheat up 22 and a quarter at 582 and three quarters. Kansas City hard red wheat up 18 and a half at 585 and three quarters. Minneapolis spring wheat up 10 and three quarters at 665 and a half. March oats down three and a quarter at 380 even. On the Merck, April live cattle down 22 cents at 187.32. March feeders up 35 at 251.37. April lean hogs up 45 cents at 85.67. April pork cutout went unchanged at 91.50. And March Class 3 milk up 15 cents at 16.99. And that's been a check of the markets here on Ag Matters PM. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. When we come back, I will have the latest Iowa Ag News headlines. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to Ag Matters PM on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Time now to take a look at the latest Iowa Ag News headlines. An Arizona District Court vacated the 2020 registration of over-the-top dicamba products so the Environmental Protection Agency issued an existing stocks order. The order allows limited sale and distribution of dicamba products that were already in the possession of growers or in trade channels outside of the control of pesticide companies by February 6th. The order also prohibits the use of these dicamba products except where the use is consistent with the previously approved labeling, which includes measures intended to reduce environmental damage caused by offsite movement of the pesticide. The EPA issued the order after receiving enough evidence that millions of gallons of OTT dicamba had already entered the trade channels before February 6th. Plus, growers aren't able to switch to other options due to the timing of the Arizona court's decision. The order applies only to dicamba formulations designed to use over-the-top of dicamba-tolerant soybeans and cotton. In other news, led by a record-shattering performance in Mexico and broad-based growth in other markets, U.S. pork exports set a value record in 2023, according to year-end data released by the USDA and compiled by the U.S. Meat Export Federation. While 2023 beef exports were below the record totals posted the previous year, December exports were the largest since August, and December export value increased 10% year over year. U.S. MEF President and CEO Dan Halstrom said several markets led the growth in 2023 and benefited U.S. pork producers. 
It's just a fantastic finish to the year for pork exports globally. Um, you know, we're, we're at a new value record of almost $8.2 billion in sales globally on U.S. pork. Of course, led by Mexico. Mexico's been leading it all year long. Uh, but really, the rest of Latin America has stepped as, up as well with, with a record into the Central American region and the DR as well. So uh, Latin America really was the story in, in 2023. Hallstrom said those strong exports generated record value for U.S. pork producers. So if you look at the total, the total situation on these exports, the key is maximizing the carcass mix and the value of the whole carcass. So uh, we came in uh, in December with a very high number of over $70 a head uh, per head payback uh, for exports of pork. Uh, and that brought the, the annual record up to $64, almost $64 a head for the year, which is an all-time record. So uh, one of the keys that plays into that is we talk a lot about the muscle cuts, but uh, once again, we had very good performance out of the pork variety meat sector uh, in, in many places around the world. Beef, on the other hand, had a more difficult year. However, Halstrom said that while export value fell 15% to just under $10 billion, this was still the third highest annual value for beef exports. As we all know, the beef has struggled throughout 2023 with, with considerable headwinds, uh, not the least of which is uh, still waiting on a rebound in food service in Asia. But that being said, there was quite a bit of good news led by Mexico and Central America, uh, the Latin American markets have performed well on U.S. beef, and that's, uh, that's really exciting. Uh, Caribbean's another area that has done well as food service is absolutely booming in the Caribbean. We're also uh, encouraged with the December performance, especially it relates to some of the Asian markets which have been lagging uh, for so long, um, particularly Korea. Uh, largest value uh, output uh, in the month of December in 18 months, so that's encouraging, and, and China had a good month as well. So uh, I think this is one of the keys going into 2024 is uh, uh, really, um, you know, empowering that full rebound of food service in Asia will lead to some, uh, some good results, I feel, as we go into 2024. Those beef exports also had an effect on carcass value. So on a total return to the beef side, uh, uh, December was an outstanding month, $430 a head, um, which is the highest in many months. And uh, that brought the annual average uh, for U.S. beef exports on a per head basis up to almost $400 a head. So all things considered, especially if you look at how we started the year in 2023, I think it finished up the year very nicely and has us well positioned going into 2024. That again was USMEF President and CEO Dan Halstrom. For more information, visit USMEF.org. And finally, uh, this week is National FFA Week. Now, we didn't have AMPM yesterday, so we couldn't uh, officially announce it on that day. Uh, but the week-long tradition began in 1947 when the National FFA Board of Directors designated the week of George Washington's birthday as National FFA Week in recognition of his legacy as an agriculturist and farmer. National FFA Week is an opportunity for FFA members, alumni, and sponsors to advocate for agricultural education and FFA. It's time to share with local, state, and national audiences about what FFA is and the impact it has on members every day. Uh, they have more uh, resources on all of their social media channels and on their website. And you'll hear from Iowa FFA President Holly Schmidt on our network later on this week. And that's all the time we have for news headlines today, and that also brings us to the end of this episode of Ag Matters PM. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. Also follow us on social media at Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and TikTok, and find our video content as well as previous episodes of AMPM on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see when those videos go live. Check out as well our free twice daily market podcast on Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. From the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network studios in Des Moines, I'm Riley Smith. On behalf of Mark Magnuson, Andy Peterson, and Dustin Huffman, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.